Welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2019 Battle Series. We are here, it is Monday. Uh, we've had a little bit of a break on the channel because we didn't have any content last week, so I am super sorry. And I have missed each and every one of you. It feels weird sitting behind the desk after such a little break. It feels like such a long break to me. But for those of you that don't know, uh, my wife Tash was pregnant uh, on the 16th of May. She gave birth to our little baby girl, Althea Bay. Um, Sophia, um, and she's absolutely lush, and I really wanted to come on today and have her here, but she's she's napping at the minute, um, but here's a little photo you can see for yourselves, she's she's gorgeous, she's amazing, um, so, if I come across a little bit tired in this episode, it's because I am exhausted, uh, it's been a bit of a, a life shock since we got home, um, so it was a bit of a, a long pregnancy as well, we had a few complications, um, and we've been in hospital and then home and then back in and then home and then back in so it's been a bit stressful um, but fingers crossed everything's all right now Tash is mending and healing up really well and baby's fine so um, it's just been amazing so yeah uh, I will bring her on of course when when she does awake at some point but it's as I say it's nice to get back into the swing of things we're gonna take a Pure chill this week. It's just nice to come back, catch up with you guys, touch base with you, get some episodes out, and get back into the swing of things a little bit slowly. So, where we finished off with last time was with this Evelto Groudon team. And we had the Incineroar. I put in him on top. Kind of performs a little bit of a, a kind of similar role there. Um, we lose, obviously, the Fire and the Dark typing from Incineroar. We just get the Fighting type in there. But we've already got those types anyway, covering ourselves with the Veltal and the Groudon. So I thought Hitmontop in there gives us White Guard support. We've got the Fake Ad still, we've got the Intimidate support still, and we've got Help in Hand, I think, on there. But as always, the team is down in the description below. If you guys would like to check it out, try it out, let me know as well if you do. Um, and we'll move on to something new next week after having a bit more of an easy one this week, I feel. So what I'd like to ask you guys, because you've been fantastic, and thank you so much for all the kind comments and uh, messages and things that you've sent in regards to the little Thea arriving it's been really heartwarming and just you guys are amazing so uh, thank you all for that but what I would like to ask you guys is next week coming into the channel what call would you like to see played um, and I will I will play something fun I will play something that you guys would like to see explored I'm really open to playing something a lot more fun we're kind of coming to the close of the VGC 19 season now we've got US Internet's coming up in a few weeks and then we've got Worlds and then things are kind of slowly wrapping up before we move into the new season we've got a little bit of a way to go but I feel like now it's kind of a, a time where we can probably experiment a little bit more try some more fun things and have a little bit more fun with VGC now going into the next few weeks so cause you'd like to see do leave your comments down below and uh, I'll look forward to reading through them and uh, I will just say in regards to the comments on previous videos so as I say that we had that we had the birth and things like that so things at home have been super crazy for me recently and if you have left a comment and I haven't responded I am sorry it's not because I'm ignoring them I've literally just been trying to juggle everything else um, at the minute and it's not not because of that I do really appreciate each and every comment that I get from you guys and I have missed you as well it's really nice to kind of come back this weekend and put some content back out and slowly get back to how things were on the channel and we'll start getting more content as the weeks got on and I start catching up on sleep and things like that. So without further ado though, let's jump into this one today. I'm hoping that it doesn't take too long to find an opponent because the the international challenge, the online tournament is going on this week, but with everything that I've had going on at home, I miss signups, which is super sad because I'm not gonna have myself a, a nice shiny Tapu Fini, which I've wanted for absolutely ever, but never mind, it's just one of those things. We've got a first opponent anyway, pretty quick, which I'm happy about, so we'll get straight into team preview. So our first opponent today is running a team of Kyogre, Rayquaza, Togodomaru, Amoongus, Tapu Lele, and Driftblim. So we've got that old combination from past VGC seasons with Tapu Lele, Driftblim, the Unburdened ability there with likely the Psychic Seed to double its speed. Uh, it has Tailwind support, it can burn things, so we have to be a little bit careful for that. And it's also got Hypnosis if I'm not wrong, but I could be just sleep deprived and just guessing here We've got other support options there with the Moongus with the redirection 
trick room check we've got the fake out support from the togodomaro lightning rod as well which kind of hinders thunderous's ability to perform as well as it kind of wants to and then the the restricted combination of rayquaza and kyoga so Iveltal here does, I, I feel Iveltal does super well in this match, it does well against the, the Lele, the Dripling, we have to be careful about the Moonblast from the Lele, but we do have Heal Pulse support from our Tapu Fini that we can, we can go with. Um, do I want to lead Tapu Fini though? That's the question. Um, it might be worth, like as much as Thunderous here doesn't feel like the best because of the Togodomaru, I do feel like the priority taunt could be quite good to lead with here um, with Thunderous, especially because the Drifling won't be on the ground. So I'm going to lead Iveltal Thunderous. I'm going to bring Tapu Fini in. I'm definitely going to bring Groud on here. So we'll click in with those. And we'll jump straight into our first one today. So yeah, oh, I just feel like my head's all over the place at the minute as well because of just like adjusting to life, getting home and just with a baby and then taking care of Tash as well. It's been it's been really stressful and like obviously with things going on which weren't like super smooth as well. It's been it has been really stressful so I just feel like my head's a little bit wobbly at the minute. But I'm sure I'll get back to normal uh, as the week goes on and we kind of adjust to things. Um one of the things that I um that I would like to do is stream this week so if we've got time Tuesday and Thursday this week if I can wangle it I will be streaming over on Twitch because I would love to have some time to catch up with you all I think it'll be a lot of fun and um, so if I do keep an eye on my my Twitter account uh, if you don't follow me over there follow me uh, Osiris VGC is my handle um, and I will post out if I am streaming and if I'm able to if not this week it will definitely be next week so we've got Lead from my opponent, Kyoga and Togodomaru. I think here what we'll do is just play it a little bit safer. We'll take Thunderous out of the equation, bring Tapu Fini in. I'm just going to protect Iveltal here um, and just get our Misty terrain up onto the field. Tapu Fini's a nice switch into Kyoga, as always, as we all know. It uh, resists these water type attacks. Um, it's so bulky as well. We have to be a little bit careful around this Togodomaru throwing out these electric type attacks. We'll get a Misty Seed activated though on our Iveltal. Uh, which is nice just to get bolster our defenses, but I don't want to leave it vulnerable here by attacking Getting faked out and maybe a water spout at the same time So I want to just protect our little old Velto. I feel like it's gonna be one of the keys to kind of unlock in this team One of the things we have to watch out for this next turn of course is um, on call on the Togodomaru and it can also do a pretty big chunk to our Tapu Fini as well Um Whether or not we want to switch in Groud on here, which might not be a bad idea uh, if I'm totally honest, but I think getting a tailwind up is going to be a big thing for us if we can do that. Um, I think the thing with switching Groudon in here is the, the problem would be um, the U-turn from the Togodomaru. If we switch Groudon in, the Togodomaru goes U-turn, then it's an easy switch to the Rayquaza for my opponent. We don't really want to allow them to do that. I think what I'll try and do is set up a light screen, if I can, with Tapu Fini. I feel a little bit like it could go down to a water spout or a zing zap here, but we're just going to see the Kyogre protect this turn, uh, which will allow us to get at least a tailwind up. Uh, Veltel's going to take a nuzzle in the process, be paralyzed, but fully not fully paralyzed, which we're not, and we get the tailwind up, which I guess it nullifies the, the nuzzle here for us for sure. We get the light screen up, which is makes things a, a bit easier for us. Um, and now we can start snarling, I think, with with Iveltal. And probably just throw out a Nature's Madness into this Togodomaru here. Um, but if we can weaken the, the Kyogre, it makes Groudon's life a lot easier. We've still got to worry about the Rayquaza coming in. But, I mean, with our Thunderous in the back, it's not too bad. Um, Thunderous obviously resists the Dragon and It's still going to take heavy damage. But I think everything in this format takes big damage from Dragon Ascent, doesn't it? Uh, so we'll see what my opponent does here. And Iveltal should still outspeed this Kyogre now with the Tailwind up. But we will see, won't we, my friends? Right, there's an Aegis Madness into the Togonomaru. Nice, because getting rid of that also opens the door up for Thunderous to come in. Doesn't have to worry about the... Um... Okay, so we're going to see Zing's that. Yep, we'll just about take that Proca Berry, which is nice. Nice, nice. 
and we'll get a snarl off. So I'm not fully paralyzed here, which is good. And get some chip onto the Kyogre and reduce that special attack, which is the main thing here. I'm gonna just see an origin pulse come up from the Kyogre. Um, and Finny's still not in bad shape, you know. I think one of the things we could maybe look at doing now is, is just going for another snarl, maybe heal pulse. Um, Because Finney's not going to be around for too much longer. Um, I think with the, the Togonomaru kicking around still, um, you've got to think probably a Zing Zap will come out onto the top of Finney again. Um, and it's probably got one more turn in it before we can get rid of maybe the Togonomaru. Maybe. We'll see. Um, Kyogre actually going to withdraw. Going to save itself for later on. What are we going to see come in? Amoongus. Okay. I mean, like, the thing is, being nuzzled with uh, Eveltal um, makes the Amoongus way less threatening. I know that we've got to worry about redirection, but at the same time, I think the Amoongus coming onto the field, oof, type of thing just hanging on there. <laughs> and we get that Snarl again. So Togonomaru will go down to another Snarl. This does open the door for us now to bring in Groudon, I think. Uh, it's probably a good time to as well. Um, and being paralyzed, we're not prone to being put to sleep. I'm just going to go for another snarl. We're not in really any danger of getting. I mean, his things that could come out from the Togodomaru here into Velto for sure. And I think the thing where we, what we're doing now, bringing Groudon onto the field, is, is it makes it easier because we've got the type of Finny, even though it's low health. It's got we've got that switch in for when Kyogre comes back onto the field just to sack Finny quite quickly. And get Groudon back out onto the field. It's just dealing with the Rayquaza in the meantime, and because we haven't got Intimidate support on our field, like our side of the field, when the Rayquaza comes out, it's kind of one of those things that I always prefer to have access to. Uh, we are going to see Togemaru go for that U-turn into the Groudon here, and I'd expect the Kyogre to come back in. So if we can catch it with a Snarl, that makes things a little bit easier. Um, and I wonder what this Amoongus goes for. Um, not going to snarl anything. I like spore or anything, I wouldn't have thought. But we're going to see Rayquaza come in. I mean, breaking a potential sash here as well is is ideal for us. Uh, it makes things a lot easier. Um, but I think the one thing that we need to really start doing this next turn is, is get Groudon out of the picture here. We're going to see a spore, but it does fail into the Eveltal. The mist does disappear from the field. Um, so we can, like I say, one of the things we could do is just go for that foul play into the Rayquaza here. Bring in Tepu Finny. Get the Misty Terrain back up onto the field. Uh, and if we can deal with Rayquaza here, you know, I think the, the matchup with our Groudon versus the Kyogre becomes a lot easier. Because uh, Groudon just eats Amoongus Togodomaru for breakfast. And we've got Thunderous to deal with the, the Kyogre. So it's the, the Togodomaru is so low health at the minute. Once that's out of the picture, then things become a lot easier. Thunderous can come in, taunt the... Uh, Moongus, so there's no redirection there as well, and then we can just deal with the Kyogre pretty pretty easily from that point. Um, it's not so straightforward, but I mean we've got a game plan in in, in our in our sights, so that's what we have to go for. So we've got the little old Tapu Fini back in. Hopefully the Rayquaza. I'd love to see a Dragon Ascend into this slot, but I, I I don't really see that happening to be honest. I think you probably chase down the Veltro over anything else. So there's the the Rayquaza Mega Evolving. And we'll see the Delta stream activate. There's a Rage Powder. Okay. Gonna pull away that, that foul play, which is a little bit of a shame. Uh, and a Waterfall. Oh, okay. Right. Well, we do lose Finny. We've got the terrain up still, which is not bad. Um, we do some decent damage to the Amoongus, I mean, as well. That's the thing. I think we can't really bring in Groudon just yet. So we'll bring in... Thunderous. I wonder if it's banned. Banned Rayquaza. Um, I'm just going to foul play the Amoongus again. Um, uh, do it. Thunderbolt or just Hidden Power Ice the Rayquaza. I mean, one of the things I could potentially do here is just. I could taunt the Amoongus. Foul play. The Rayquaza and Taunt the Amoongus. That's 
yeah, maybe better. And then at least the next turn we'll be able to go for... Yeah, we're going to be able to remove it from the field. Mm, something's taking a waterfall. Oh, it's Dragon Ascenting. Okay, where are we going? Team Velto. Okay. So much damage, doesn't it? It really does do so much damage. And this will take down the Amoongus. So it's a bit of a wasted turn for my uh, Thunderous there. We were probably better off going Hidden Power Ice into that slot and hoping that that would have been enough. And then we could have foul played into the Rayquaza. So a little bit of an error on our part, I think, for that one, for sure. Talking tomorrow, we're going to hit the field once again. Which does make things a little bit more awkward. Um... Especially because we've not really got a solid way to get rid of the Togodomaru. Um I mean, we can protect... I think one of the things we could potentially do is switching Groudon. I just I don't want to be in that position where I've just got two Pokemon left and, you know... I'm going to bring in Groudon and I'm going to just protect Thunderous here. Because we want to be able to switch around. We want to be able to switch around to try and win this weather war at the end. Like that's one thing I'm like really conscious of. And hopefully we don't see the Rayquaza attack into that crowd on here. That would that I think that's the one thing that we don't want to be seeing. Fake out. Yeah, into the Thunderous and then Dragon Ascent. Yeah, it's going to be into the Groudon. Okay, but I mean, we can protect this next turn and we can hidden part ice into that, that Rayquaza. <sighs> so much damage. So much damage. Um, okay. Like, the, the play that I would like to make is protect Groudon, uh, hidden part ice into the Rayquaza, which should pick up the knockout after the Dragon Ascent drops. Um... We'll see, we'll see, we'll try it, we'll try it. But I don't know if it's going to be... Hmm. I don't know if you just protect requires. It hasn't revealed protect. It's definitely not banded because of the, the move alterations it's done. Um, uh, hopefully you chase down the Groudon if you're the Rayquaza to protect the Togemaru. Yeah, it's gone Dragon Ascent, so the hidden part ice here should be enough, especially with the sun up. So I haven't got the Delta Stream anymore. Yeah, more than enough. Uh, and now our job is dealing with um, the Kyogre, um, which we're probably going to have to sack at Eveltal. Um, protect Thunder... Yeah, Protect Thunderous, which grabbed on out to Eveltal. Uh, it's then dealing with the Togodomaru. Um, and then once that's done, we've got the, the Gigavolt Havoc to deal with the, the Kyogre. So we, we've still got an end goal, for sure. It's just kind of working it, in a way, because the Togunamaru comes back in now. It's got the fake out, obviously, next to the Kyogre. It's trying to win this weather war and then deal with the Togunamaru. The other thing is, to be honest, like the Kyogre's probably slower than our Groudon. Um, but I am going to just switch into Uvelta here, sack that, and just protect Thunderous. Because Thunderous is like the, the, the most, well, I'd say the most important thing. As Groudon's pretty important to getting this weather back up in our favour. And this is why we wanted, you know, the weather wall. I'm talking about before, having just the options there to switch around to get our weather control back at some point. Especially in these kind of formats where weather's such a big thing. Um, just having that option where you can you can switch it in and uh, get, get control again makes it a lot easier to do. So... We'll protect the Thunderous here. We'll see Fake Out. For, ooh, just a Zingzap. Just going straight for it into the Veltal. Um, don't mind that. Because we, we switched it in to get that advantage anyway, didn't we? Um, and then there's the Water Spout. Yeah, so that's fine. Misty Terrain disappears from the field. Um, it's a pity that our Groudon isn't faster than our Thunderous. Because here, then we could we could press up his blades and attack into the the, um, the Kyogre. Um, but I wonder what you do if you're my opponent. 
because you probably ice beam the, the, the Groudon, I'd imagine. I just, I wonder if a hidden power ice is going to be enough to get the Togo tomorrow. That's what I would wonder. I just don't know if it is. I don't know if it's going to be enough. That's the thing. Should we just press up his blades? Just if the Togo tomorrow protects. That's the only thing. And then we take an ice beam. Then things get a little bit tricky. I'm going to protect Groudon. And I'm going to just go for a hidden part ice into the Togo tomorrow and hope that it's enough. I mean, two hidden part ices should be enough. But maybe the, the right thing to do here is just press with blades. It's just until the Togo tomorrow is down, the Thunderous is a little bit useless against the, um, the, the Kyogre. Come on. Oh, it's not enough. The next one will be enough though, as a U-turn. Yeah, and an Ice Beam into that slot. Yeah, okay, so this is fine. Now we just hit part Ice, the Togo tomorrow, which will be enough to take it down. We can press with blades, get some damage on that Kyogre, and th that should wrap it up for us. Um, yeah, okay. So there we go. Beating down that Togo tomorrow with a critical hit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get the precipice blades. It does hit. Groudon's behaving itself today. It's doing good. It's doing good. Doing good. Yeah. And now, yeah, ice beam. Take down the Groudon um, for sure. And then we will have uh, Gigavolt Havoc. So Thunderous coming through as the hero in today's episode. I'm sorry if you can hear. Um, baby sounds like it's awake here. So. Um, Baby, you might hear baby over the over bleeding through, but here we go. We're gonna end in style, and we are gonna have this gigavolt havoc. It is gonna take down the Kyogre, and we're gonna be able to have a, a victory for our first first game today, which is amazing uh, to kick us off. And I'm surprised. This is a nice game as well. I think it's a bit backwards and forwards. Um, it's been a little bit tricky, so I'm um, coming out with a win against like a call that I feel is is pretty difficult for this team to deal with um, and you've got to play it right but I think the inclusion of the Thunderous in this team uh, really helps out a lot against this core in particular so very good game to my opponent and a nice way for us to kick off today so hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our next opponent um, and we'll get into it but uh, I don't know like when I was mentioning earlier in the video asking you guys for what cores you'd like to see played next week like I've played a lot of Groudon on the channel, um, and I feel like I've not really played too much Kyogre, so like a core like um, Lunala Kyogre could be nice. We've played uh, Kyogre Xerneas, um, but Ultra Necrozma Kyogre isn't a core I've really seen too much of. We could explore that. So there are a lot of options, and we don't even need to play Kyogre. We don't need to play Groudon. We don't need to play Rayquaza. We could play something else completely different and um, I guess we'll pick some music so if you guys have got any ideas on restricted combinations that you'd like to see played let's go and cross my version 2 because it's such a nice day to come back onto the channel and be with you guys and put some videos out as well and just get started again um, it's been really yeah it's really nice so we'll, we'll celebrate with the cross my version 2 for sure and the next one hopefully it doesn't find take too long to find the next opponent um, but if it does, as always, guys, I just cut it and we'll come straight back to when we do find someone. And we've got our next opponent of the episode. We've got Riri. Is it Riri? 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 Looks like a cool team, so we'll hop straight into team preview, my friends. Okay, so our next opponent today is running a team of Groudon, Salomon, Scrafty, Donwings, Necrozma, Tapu Fini, and Stakataka. So, it's probably Ultra Necrozma with the Groudon, but we can't discount that it could be just Dawn Wings. Um, it's not likely though, I don't think. There's definitely a Trick Room mod here. I love the inclusion of the Scrafty in the team. You've got that double Intimidate there. Scrafty performs a little bit better than Incineroar under Trick Room. It has the Fighting Stab as well. Lots of options for support there with the Stack Attacker being the Trick Room setter, maybe supporting that Groudon. And it's probably a mixed Groudon where it can perform in Tailwind and under those Trick Room situations. You've got the Trick Room on the Stack Attacker, the Tailwind lightly on that Salamence there. Um, how are we gonna approach this? Like, Evelto does 
pretty decent here. You know, this one's the one for him on top. I love him on top in this match. It does well against the Scrafty. It does well against the Stack Attacker. It's got the Y God support against the Groudon, the Hyper Voice from the Salamence. Got to be careful around that Dawnwings to Crossma though, for sure, with those um, Photon Geysers and things like that. But uh, I think the Intimidate will be very, very useful here. So I'm going to lead him on top. Um, I think we'll go Ivalto because Ivalto's just. Ivalto. Uh, we'll bring Tapu Fini and then uh, round things off with good old Groudon. Leaving Metacross out again. But we've got plenty of time this week to bring the Metacross in and give it a run out and see if what it can do. We've already had a good week with Metacross as well and it's put some really good work in, especially against some of those X-Ray teams. Um, but yeah, I really do like Metacross. I just love this team in general, to be honest. I think the seed Ivalto is really nice and I think there's a lot of room to improve the team for sure, and uh, they've got a shiny Tapu Fini. Has there been an event for a shiny Tapu Fini already? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm suspicious. I'm a little bit suspicious of it. We're going to see the uh, the Cosma and the Tapu Fini come out for my opponent. Um, we will activate our seed without actually bringing in our Tapu Fini. We've got access to our fake out here as well, so we can stop that Fini from doing anything this first turn, I think probably not a bad idea and you could set up a tailwind but I don't know if I want to do that right away I might just snarl just to kind of just kind of see what my opponent's gonna go for with this necrozma it could actually yeah it's just gonna withdraw we're putting on enough pressure with the Veltal to kind of force it out as we see this grafty hit the field my opponent and uh, cycle that intimidate we'll be able to just shut down the thing this next turn um, one of the things I might try and do this next turn is after we've got the Snarl off is try and bring our Groudon in um, because it's going to be one thing that we've got on our side of the field that can really throw up big damage against the Tapu Fini and the Scrafty whereas otherwise if I bring in Tapu Fini of our own we're not really doing too much, we're quite passive and I, I want to start doing big damage quite quickly so I'm, I am going to bring in the Groudon here for the Hitmontop. I think the Hitmontop slot as well is probably one that you're going to ignore a little bit more uh, if you're my opponent. I know we do put a bit of pressure onto that Scrafty with close combat for sure uh, because of dark typing. But I think you want to concentrate probably more down on the Avelto which is kind of stopping you, my opponent's ability to use that, the Crosma, as much as they would like in this situation. So uh, we will bring in the Groudon and uh, we'll get that Desolate Land activated. Probably see a fake out from the Scrafty and maybe a Nature's Madness into our Ivaltal or an Icy Wind potentially from the Finny here. Um, we'll see what they go for. There's the fake out. It is into our hip on top though. And Nature's Madness into the Ivaltal. Okay. It's not too bad. Don't mind that too much. Uh, we could launch an Eruption here. Um, we could just go Precipice Blades. Precipice Blades. Probably a bit more reliable, just to do a bit more damage to that type of finny. Um, and I think a tailwind here is probably it's a good time to get a tailwind up. So there's a press bit blades. Of course we missed the finny. This is why eruption would have been better. We're gonna hit the scrafty though, so get some damage there. Um, do some decent damage. We've we'll got this tailwind up with Ivalto. Um Scrafty also gets super fang as well, so we have to watch out for that. We're gonna see an icy wind though. So no nature of madness this time. Which is kind of prefer to be honest. Um, what's a Scrafty gonna do? What are we gonna do, Scrafty? Super fine. Okay, continue Velto. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, because that's that's the, that's the one thing that we want to be targeting down. I think on anything else. Um, could prevent preserve Groudon for a little bit later. Bring in a Tapu Fini of our own now, just for that heal pulse support. I think against uh. We, yeah, so I'm just going to protect Eveltal. I don't want to take Niche's Madness and Superfine Damage again. I want to get Tapu Fini onto the field. Get some Heal Pulse. Eveltal's like so important for us, especially against that, that Dawn Wings or Ultra Necrozma that's lurking in the back that we've already seen. Um, and it's just another Icy Wind. And I'm going to see another Superfine from the Scrafty, I'd imagine. The problem is doing this is... Again, like we were saying initially, being very passive, we've not got really that many ways to deal with the Scrafty type of thing with, with these two Pokemon we've got on the field right now. But, I mean, with the, the Heal Pulse support that we've got access to, kind of alleviate that a little bit. Um, and, I mean, we could just Snarl. Not really doing too much. I mean, 
it's just about catching something on the switch in rather than anything else um, and I guess this is where we fall back where the problem is where Oblivion Wing would be extremely useful in this situation and that's something maybe we want to consider Arnie Veltal gives us just a different dimension to be able to hit like Pokemon like Scrafty get a bit more damage onto something like the Tapu Fini as well um, we'll go Snarl but I don't see my opponent switching out I think they're just going to stay in and just keep chipping away at stuff with the icy wind um, So there's a heal pulse, yeah. Just constant icy winds as well. Super fan coming out from the Scrafty, probably into Evelto. Ooh, Law Kick, huh, okay. Does just about as much as the, the Super Fan was doing. Um, I mean, heal pulse again. Um, I mean, the one thing we could potentially do is... It's just we're kind of locked. I like, I really want the heal pulse. Just we're just not doing the damage that we need to. Um, could go for a far play into the Scrafty just to try and get rid of that. This is where... Yo, know, okay, we're going to see the Scrafty withdraw. We're going to see Groudon coming in. So that's... That works out a lot better for us here. Um, and we'll be in a good position with Yveltal after this turn anyway, because we'll be full health. Because um, Finney's going to be the last thing moving on the field. So there's the Desolate Land. And this foul play should do around 50-60% to the Groudon. And this is the last turn of our Tailwind, got to remember. So, yeah. Mm, not as much as what I was expecting. Maybe more specially orientated Groudon. And uh, Nature's Madness into Finny here, and uh, yeah, we'll get all that health back with Bicky Valco. Um, Tailwind Pit is out. Um, we can just Icy Wind, I think, and go for another foul play into the Groudon. Groudon might protect here. Um, I think you're susceptible to definitely knowing that you, you could lose your Groudon quite easily here to a foul play Icy Wind. Um, but if you get greedy, I think, and go for a Precipice Blades to try and get rid of the Tapu Fini, it's quite risky at this health that we're on now. I think if you Nature's Madness into that slot, um, mm, oh, Fire Punch, this probably will do, actually. <sighs> okay. It's not the worst. It's not the worst. It's not the best losing Yvelto because now the, the, the Necrozma has a way easier time to come in. And I just don't know if we're going to be able to do uh, the Fire Punch. It's always something I forget about. It really is. Um, now, I think with the Groudon, it switches out to Scrafty here. Um, I don't think the opposing Groudon stays in. Um, I'm just going to Nature's Madness to tap with Finny. And I think, uh, just do I protect Groudon? Or do I just press his blades? It's just I don't really want to take too much damage here. Just if I protect, the Scrafty comes in and then we, we're forced to switch out this next turn. Whereas we could just switch to him on top and then we've got a bit more room going into the next turn, I think. And then keeping our Groudon safe is probably the best thing to do at this point. Um. Whether or not we see the Scrafty come in for the opposing Groudon, that's, uh, that would be my best guess, I think. And I think we're getting punished in this match because we've not really brought uh, the, the Finny check that we need. Um, and it's just a little bit lax, I think, on our end because um, that's why we put Thunderous in the team to give us a better option against that type of Finny that was such a, a problem for us to deal with, you know. And I think not bringing it in this match is... is is hurting us a lot and we're just so sitting on the field it's been so disruptive and i think that's one of the things we've got to be very mindful of going into these matches but i'm gonna put it down to being a little bit sleepy not myself but uh, we'll see if we can come back from this you know the match isn't over just yet um it's probably a good time to try and set up a light screen for sure i'm just gonna fake out into the, the opposing type of finny i don't think we'll pick up 
proc a berry there just yet. And what we want to try and do is not proc a berry there. I'm going to see it actually switch out. Groudon going to hit the field once again. We do have Wide Guard support as well, so we can probably get Engineer our own Groudon back onto the field. Um, and Wide God support. Ooh, I'm Scrafty actually outspeeding uh, him on top. So we do get the light screen up, which is nice. Okay. I think the thing we have to worry about a little bit is uh, Super Fang into our Groudon. Uh, but I am just going to Wide Guard right now, bringing our Groudon. But the dust, the Dawn Wings Necrozma is the one thing that I'm worrying about, and I just don't know if we've got the tools to actually deal with it right now. Tapu Finning gonna hit the field once again. It is in Precipice Blades range. I would say it's probably in Precipice Blades range. So if we can get a Groudon in safely now, um, and we can cover ourselves against the potential Precipice Blades coming out from our opponent, we'll be in a decent position going into the next turn. I mean, it forces the Scrafty back in as well, that's the other thing. Yeah, so there's Precipice Blades, so we did block that. But what we can try and do is predict the Scrafty coming in for the Groudon slot. Um, or we could just help in hand, to be honest, because... Minus one, we probably wouldn't get the Finny, and I think that's probably what my opponent would be going for. So I'm going to help in hand Precipice Blades here, which should get the Finny on minus one, and maybe gets the Scrafty. Yeah. We're going to see it. There it is. So Groudon, being a good boy today, hits these blades and takes down both these. Would be incredible. Here's that helping hand. Helping hand, such an underrated move. It really is. I mean... I probably prefer to miss the Scrafty than the Finny, if I'm honest, but... At the same time, it's not ideal. It's not ideal. Because this thing is incredibly difficult to deal with. Um, especially when we've got Fake Out to contend with as well. Um, and we could bring in Finny. Ooh, what's that going to get us? I could protect Groudon. I think you chase the Groudon here. I think you chase Groudon. So I'm going to just do this. And I'm going to go close combat into the Scrafty. Try and get the Scrafty. Like a minus one, close combat will get the Scrafty. We are going to see the Ultra and the Cross. We do have the light screen up as well, which is helping us slightly. But it's kind of a case of we need to get Tapu Fini in, get a, an icy wind onto that Necrozma. And I don't know whether we're going to be able to do that or not. Uh, there's a fake out. It's into the Groudon. Photon guys are uh, it's into the top. Okay. No, they made the I mean they made the right choice there, you know. And now we lose a wide guard as well. But I think that the thing here is losing the Evelto like we did. Um underestimating the fire punch. Or just not thinking about the fire punch, you know. It's like mm, Bit frustrating, but there's not really much we can do now because then we've got the Z move coming out. <sighs> Precipice Blades. It's not really going to cut it, I don't think. Um, I mean, we can Icy Wind. We can icy, We can try an Icy Wind in Precipice Blades. Okay. So the Cross, we're going to just protect here. We see Super Fang from the Scrafty, maybe. Okay, so we're going to get this, but I don't think we're going to get an Icy Wind into this Necrozma, that's the thing. I think we probably see Super Fang into... Okay, foul play. Mm -hmm. And then the light screen does wear off. Now, I would think... Ugh, the problem is, like, even if I attack here, like, I'm thinking, okay... My opponent probably thinks I protect Groudon here, uh, so they attack into the Finny, but it doesn't really change anything. I've got to get Precipice Blades, and <sighs> do we heal pulse? Or do I? Yeah, I think I heal pulse. Or Icy Wind, because then we can, we, yeah, if I can get an Icy Wind and Groudon gets through this turn, I just don't see it happening. Ooh, actually outspeed in the Crossman, but we do miss it, which is infuriating. <laughs> 
I think there's a lot on this game though. I'm not annoyed. I'm just there's there's a lot of players here that we could have made a little bit differently, being a bit more mindful of, and I will put that down to like being a little bit not myself. Um, so it is into the top of Finney. We'll go down. It's strange that the ground on our speeds the the crossma. So we get a critical hit to Prespa's blades. Into the Necrozma. We could still win. We could still win. We could still win. But I don't think we do. I don't think we do. Uh, we should outspeed the Groudon unless it's like a speed tie. We're max speed Groudon. So um, it's just whether or not the Necrozma uh, attacks and the, the opposing Groudon protects. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, there's a protect. You're going to use the Necrozma just to deal with the Groudon. Makes a lot of sense. Um, press with blades. Disconnect. Be interesting to see how much damage this does. If it does 50%, nah, it's nowhere near. Minus one. Ooh. Trick of a room. Okay, nice. Okay. Okay, now it's, now it's done. Unless their precipice blades misses. But they got photon guys that they probably got. Earth power. Fire punch. Doesn't want to risk it. And there's a photon guys, and that'll be game. It's a very good game to my opponent. Um, like I've said throughout this, I think there's just areas where we could have improved. I think Thunderous in this matchup as well would have been a lot more useful than not bringing it. Just because of the type of Finney and what a threat it caused. And you know, it was the main reason why I put it in the team to begin with, because we have that quick answer to dealing with it. And I think that's one of the things we need to be a bit more mindful of uh, as we go on through this week. But I've enjoyed today's episode, guys. I really hope you have as well. Um, and I really look forward to reading through your comments. So do leave them. Let me know your thoughts on the changes that we've made to the team and also what you've thought of today's um, battles. And also, like I mentioned earlier in the video, before I do this, um, just let me know what cause you'd like to see played next week. And uh, I'll even put a poll up on the, the YouTube channel so we can have a vote and uh, we can get something put in place for next week for what you'd like to see. But thank you so much for tuning in, guys. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next episode tomorrow. So until then, take care and bye-bye.